Hi, I'm Alon Rubin. This deep dive is going to be for my song 24 Hour Fix. Put the song out last year, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And I realized that I hadn't done a deep dive for a couple of those songs, so my OCD got the best of me, and here we are making up for it. This deep dive video is going to be a little different to the other ones because I am missing far more plugins than usual. Probably because I recently upgraded to an M2 and not all plugins are compatible yet with the system. So what we're going to do this time around is we're going to listen to the final mix that went to mastering. And then when I solo certain things out and get into greater detail, we'll listen to the tracks. Now, the tracks do still have quite a few plugins on them, but they definitely sound more raw than if we had everything committed here per usual. So a little bit about this track, Straight Ahead Rock Song, recorded most of the basic tracking at Signature Sound in San Diego, did the vocals, some other overdubs, and percussion here in this very room. So mixed by Aaron Rubin per usual. Let's go ahead and take a dive in. Now remember, this is the final mix pre-mastering. Okay, that is the meat of the song right there. Drums, bass, guitar. Let's listen to these drums. As I said, recorded Signature Sound, which is a fantastic room that I have recorded too many times to count through my throughout my entire life. Let's hear what those sound like. All right, get a nice sense of the room there, but still controlled. Adding in bass. All right, so let's get into verse one. I took a walk in the evening with the sign that says I'm looking for more. A pair of hands in the distance wave me in. I got my foot in the door. He said, All right, so we have the verse that then goes into a kind of B section, but it's just a different melody over the same groove of the verse. And it only happens this time in the song. Doesn't happen in verse two, if I'm not mistaken. But leading into it, there's this fun bass line that I really enjoy. Always fun. Okay, so B section with these ooze that come in as the new backups. Okay, so there's that B section. These ooze here are about eight tracks that are just enhancing what the lead vocalist is doing. Me. Some more fun bass lines. Then we get into this chorus that opens up with these new guitars. Let's listen to the chorus first, and then I will dive into the tracks here. <laughs> Okay, so same thing with the ooze, just there backing up what the lead vocal is doing, and then these guitars two and three come in. Dirty, raw, love it. Now, as you can hear with the tracks soloed, the room sound is a big part of this song for all instruments, minus the bass. Hear that little bit of decay there. So 
very important, and that's why we decided to record this song in that studio. It was just integral to the sound of the song overall. So then we go to this re-intro, which has a fun little guitar solo. Here's the section. <laughs> Let's listen to that solo by itself. Okay, and in listening to the track, there is some fun interplay between the bass and the drums, with the bass drum locking in with this walking on the bass, let's take a listen. All right, and that takes us into verse number two. So as I said earlier, that uh, B section, sort of pre-chorus, only happens the first time around. Now, verse 2 is very short, wanted to keep things moving forward, but I added these breaks here to just add a little something different. So let's listen. So those breaks with the band, and then slight vocal variation. Add a bit of energy, a bit of change, and then we fall into the familiar chorus. So here's chorus number two. Okay, so the new element for this chorus are just these riff sort of bends that are following what the vocals are doing. So even when I repeat a section of a song, I like to at least have a slightly new element to have it feel less redundant. I'm not as interested in, say, changing lyrics for choruses from one to the next because I feel like that's a, that's a part of the song that you're always working to get back towards, so I like keeping the lyrics the same. But musically, I feel it's important to at least add something that adds a bit of variation. So in this regard, there are these bends or slides. Let me, let's listen to what I did. Let me remember. Okay, so bending sounds kind of slidey because I'm, I like to call it unbending, where I start with the note up and then fall into the note and then it slides down. So that is doubling what the oohs are doing in the backup vocals, and that is the, the new sound for that second chorus. So then let's get into this bridge and then elaborate further. So to open things up here, a piano comes in, which I, quite frankly, forgot was there. But just doing the chords. Okay, so what's funny to me about that is 
first of all, I forgot the piano was there. The piano is playing the chords in a fuller form than what the guitars are doing. And what I mean by that is it's very easy with guitar chords to omit some of the, the, the notes in the chord, whether it be the fifth or the, the minor third in this instance, because I believe the first chord is an A minor. Not really sure. Let's see. Actually, it is not. But it's funny to me because when I hear the piano chords, Coincidentally, it almost sounds like the uh, the end of All the Love in the World. Which is very funny to me, because the songs sound nothing alike. And the guitars are doing this. songs sound nothing alike, but when you distill that into piano chords, it does sound very similar, which I find very funny. But here we have the backing vocals that really open this up. And let's take a listen to that a cappella. Okay, actually this starts in E major, if I'm not mistaken. E flat major. Okay, so this song, I tuned a half step down, which I used to do with all the New Regime stuff. As far as I can recall, all the Elon Rubin solo stuff has been tuned to standard, but this song is E flat major. Those harmonies are outlining the chords, obviously. And then we have a nice little bridge slide over here at the end <laughs> let's see what these bridge bends are Okay, so that's just providing some atmosphere, but let's go ahead and solo just the instrumentation here. Some drums, percussion, bass, guitars. I believe that's everything. And then the slides at the very end. Let's see what this sounds like. <laughs> So that's the instrumentation for the bridge. Then we move on to a quick little reintro. That sounds like this, leading into chorus three. <laughs> Okay, so two new sections of the song coming up right now. We have this post-chorus. Now, it's not necessarily a post-chorus in the sense of what you'd have in a pop song where you have the chorus and then there's almost like a, a secondary chorus that, say, repeats a hook, really redundantly nails a theme, whatever it may be. This is a, just another section. It's almost like a, a bridge that comes in, but it's a 
different bridge than the one that's actually in the middle of the song. So let's listen to this post chorus. So there you go. New new uh new section of the song, same chords as the chorus basically. Repeating a hook in a different way and then some more hooky ooze. So, now we get to this hits into the jam section. Now, I am particularly proud of this part of the song. Now, growing up listening to a lot of classic rock, a lot of bands, a lot of bands who improvised, it's something that I love listening to, it's something that I love doing as a player on all instruments. But it's obviously a different thing when you are one person playing three or four instruments, but you want to sound like these different musicians are jamming and improvising. And in the demoing phase, it's exactly what it was. I just played some drums or these V drums behind me feeding addictive drums. Then I'd go in, lay down a rhythm guitar, not really think much about it, improvise on the bass, and then realize, okay, that feels like a good amount of time, structurally speaking. And then I would go in and improvise a guitar solo. So then we have the sort of final version of that. But let's listen to it, and then we'll we'll take a dive into the individual parts. <laughs> Okay, fun. Improvised. Sounds like the drummer's getting into it. I get my uh, my Liam Gallagher on here. jammy let's go ahead and listen to the drums bass and guitar the sort of i was going to call it a power trio but there are some rhythm guitars here so let's see <laughs> things are coming to mind right now. I quote the reintro guitar solo in this little bit here. So that's fun if you go back and listen to that. But what really gives this uh, an improvisational feel, aside from a guitar solo on top of everything, is really what the bass and drums are doing. So let's listen to that. There's a lot of interplay between the two.
what's important in a thing like this, if you want to sound jammy, is to not be too perfect. It's got to feel like everyone is in their own in their own world, but playing together. I really don't know how much better to put that. Not there, there shouldn't be too much philosophy here. Everyone is listening to what everyone else is doing, but definitely focusing on what they're doing individually. And there you have it. That's 24-Hour Fix. There's a video for this song. Doing videos is not my favorite, but I like the way this one came out. 24-Hour Fix. Be sure to actually go watch that video or stream it wherever you listen to it so you can hear the track in its full, finished form, mastered, and perfect for your listening pleasure. 24-Hour Fix. Thank you very much. We'll see you soon, I'm sure.